Yeah, a bunch of pervs. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, I know. He puts sex toys in a talk and everyone turns up. Um, <laughs> Sorry about the title. Um, this is about a project we've been doing for a little while now. We first looked at sex toys about two and a half years ago, found some bits and pieces, frankly got bored, didn't think it was suitable for um, publishing, so kind of forgot about that. And about six months ago, we found something nuts, which we exploited, got a nice shell working on, and then the last week, we found a load of new stuff. We were kind of sitting there, do we just do the really stable demo that works every time, fantastic, or should we just wing it and see what happens? Yeah, we chose winging it anyway. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is really a talk about hardware hacking. I know kind of the, the pink latex stuff is kind of interesting, but actually it's, it's the hardware reversion that's gone into it that <coughs> all the press kind of missed when we published a blog a little while back, um, a little while ago. Um, I want to say, before we start, this definitely carries uh, restricted rating. <laughs> um, I actually went and read the British Board of Film Classification website, and frankly, this covers the talk. Um, I don't think there's any sadistic or sexual threat like this. It's probably a good thing, but there, if anyone's under the age of 15 here, then you shouldn't be watching. Um, it's pretty grim. Um, this talk is in two parts. It's kind of like a vampire road movie. The first bit is really safe for work, definitely suitable. The second bit, the wheels fall off and it gets really quite grim, unfortunately. So, <laughs> yeah, there was a bit that happened on Motherboard Vice that even I couldn't read the Twitter feed that, of the blog that I'd published, but that's another story. So, where are we going to start? We're going to start by doing some simple hardware reverse engineering, look at some basic techniques you might find useful. We spend a lot of our time testing IoT, and my view is if you are not got a logic probe and you're not trying to recover the firmware, you're not really testing it properly. Um, a couple of years back, we got into um, looking at DVRs, digital video recorders for your CCTV. This is one we found, MV Power. Um, it's a complete fucking train wreck. It's ridiculous. Um, it opens port 80 using UPnP on the internet. You can go and show, show down for it, and there's 44,000 on the interwebs, which is great. Um, it presents authentication to you. Unfortunately, you can just change the cookie values and it authenticates you. <laughs> okay, fine, this, this isn't going to be difficult, is it? Um, and then it got a bit worse, everything runs as root, you can execute after command, you can get the root shell running out, which is nice and cool, so you can steal everyone's video feeds, which is really groovy, fantastic. Liked a bit of that, um, and then things got a little bit worse. We discovered in the firmware, once we um, pulled it apart, is every six seconds it was taking a snapshot of the video stream and sending it this email address. <laughs> <laughs> now, when we tried to disclose, we emailed this guy, a guy called Frank Law apparently. Um, and we tried to disclose, tried to tell him all about it, and he completely ignored us until we streamed him the intro sequence of Button Moon, Frank by Frank. <laughs> <laughs> One of the team just kind of really likes button mooning things, I don't know. It's kind of, kind of rip rolling but by Andrew, but that's another story. Um, I think, we think it was accidental. We think this was pre prod firmware. It accidentally got into live releases, but there are people out there who, yeah, this email account was being hammered by their video streams, which is just nuts. Surely it can get better than this. Anyway, we moved on um, and started looking at Mirai, um, which was great fun. You all know about Mirai, been there, done that, got the t-shirt. Um, this is the original attribution list, and there, there was a lot of um, misleading information about the first version of Mirai. And I think what happened is people got access to the, uh, the source code, found the 63 sets of the, um, default root telnet passwords, and tried matching them up to known um, default password lists, and made some mistakes along the way. This is really good stuff. So you see loads of um, cameras, DVRs and stuff, and then things go a bit weird, so there's a printer, a router, blah, blah, blah. And even this one here, ZLXX, which someone thought was a ZLX two-way speaker, it wasn't. What happened is um, there were a bunch of other brands of DVRs out there that people hadn't had time to look at. We spent a while, bought a load of new DVRs, found actually this is a Cubis, that's a Yale, Biden and Macken at the moment, um, that's a Mesury. These are all DVRs. Mirai is just, well certainly the first iteration of Mirai was just about digital video recorders, nothing else. Um, now, we saw Mirai, I thought, great, that was beautifully simple, fantastic, you know, use a set of default creds or take a box, fantastic, nice and easy. Uh, we felt that because Mirai was so simple, there was other stuff going on, other stuff that had been missed. So we bought a load of DVR, I think got 32 in the end, 33 now, just been to Mac and bought another one. Um, and there's still some work going on, but we found all sorts of crazy stuff, really, really crazy stuff that you could use, including um, a nice Wormball remote code execution, which is quite good fun. Um, and I also discovered a lot of DVRs have got additional functionality, so they've got some switching on them, so you can um, send signaling alerts to your alarm, so you can actually turn your house alarm off using the Mirai exploit, which I thought was brilliant. Um, 
Where else did we go? So the first thing we found when we um, went out on these DDRs is discovered this. You see XM, XMI, XM stands for Jean Mai. Oh, they keep coming up and up in this talk about Jean Mai. Is we discovered there is a super user password that the alarm installers can use. It's a daily changing password. It's essentially a one-time pad. And as you all know, the challenge with the one-time pad is distribution. What you don't do is put it on your public LinkedIn profile, like this Nigerian <laughs> CCTV installer. Uh, yeah, that's, that's now down, but yeah, that's your daily changing password. I'm not quite sure what interface that applies to, but people I've spoken to on Twitter have successfully used these to author their DDRs. But yeah, this is just bananas. Um, so really where we want to go now is we're going to start having a little look at a DDR we've got in pieces. Um, Nick, do you want to um, take over? Okay. Oh, you might share your screen. You can have to force it up. I'll see if I can. You're going to need to share the screen, mate. Just quick scan, make sure I don't have anything I shouldn't be sharing. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be a lot of things you shouldn't be showing today. <laughs> right, Nick, over to you. Well, first of all, I need to make sure. Bear with me one second. So we've got a stack of DVR. We've bought all those of them and dismounted them. Where's the one I've got? That's loud. So, first thing to do is um, unmake DVR. It's really easy. Um, there's not much to do to it. You've got some interesting interfaces. You've got a nick there. But what we're more interested in is, frankly, is the firmware, which is going to be generally stored in a flash model, probably on, on the back of the chipset just there. How are you getting on, Nick? Yeah, that's ready. Do we just need to put power into it? Cool. All right, should we restart it? So, if you're trying to get firmware off of DVR, one of the easiest ways is to try and instruct a bootloader. So these most of these use U-boots, really easy. All you have to do is get a nice interactive console and you can just interrupt the bootloader. Wait for it. There you go. There you go. There you right, go. And now we can print environment variables. There you go. Make it bigger. Make it bigger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, once you've got the environment variables, it's pretty much straightforward. If you don't get an interactive console, then you're going to need to do, potentially do a glitch. Now, I was going to try and do a glitch on this one live, but we broke it this morning. Which <laughs> <laughs> is a bit stupid. Um, so we're not going to do a live glitch, but it's really straightforward. What you're trying to do is, if you don't have the interactive terminal where you can interrupt the boot process, what you try and do is drop one of the pins to ground. So you boot, looks at it and goes, no voltage, no firmware. Crashes out, gives you a nice console you can play with. Um, all you want to do is drop one of the MISO and Mozzie pins to ground during the big process. Boom. Glitch. It's that easy. A lot of people get, I think, freaked out by hardware. It's not complicated at all. It's going to be difficult to do any serious damage, although working on mains last week was a <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't yeah. grab a mains board button. Yeah. 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 That, that was it. Yeah. <laughs> cool. What should we do? Shh. <laughs> cool. Really used to get the firmware off that. Where should we go next? Um, go back to this, I guess. Ah, yeah, okay. So once we've got the firmware, started taking things apart. Had a bit of fun. Shift F5. There you go. Got the firmware in bits and found some useful stuff. So we found some store credentials, uh, which is quite fun, all useful, great stuff. We found a load of other things as well. Um, this is where things got a bit creepy. Um, we found a load of DVRs that no one really knew were vulnerable to the Mirai exploits. So those <coughs> brands. Um, Lorex is a well-known brand. I've got one just here. Quite expensive. Um, we found a lovely new root password to make it 64 sets of default Telnet root passwords. I love that one. Um, we found an amazing stealth mode on Lilin, which is quite a high-end US DVR brand. Um, they didn't run Telnet on port 23. Oh no, they ran it on 12323. Get in, that was a good one. Um, and then things got a bit freaky. So the Sphere shell, this is Sphere's the binary blob that runs everything. It's one massive, massive binary. Um, each installation, each version that each um, brand uses is very slightly different. But we found um, a shell running on TCP 9527. That's quite good fun, quite useful. You can log into it. I think I've got a screenshot of it, because we weren't going to do it live. Yeah, there we go. This is it. And um, it's got a password, admin, an admin, or 123456. And from there, what we started to find with some of them, so we've got a flurry on DVL, which we bought very recently. This one, got it about three weeks ago, we discovered it's not running Telnet anymore. They've actually pushed new firmware, so the new product you buy doesn't have the Mirai vulnerability anymore. Except that you can restart the Telnet daemon from that interface, which is on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, and this got us quite interested, actually, because um, you might have seen Brickabot that was um, supposed to go around bricking or trying to fix devices, and if it couldn't um, fix them, it would brick them. 
Now, if you look at the source code, yeah, it's kind of fucked up ethics or what. <laughs> um, if you go and look at the source code to Brickbot, I'm not quite sure how it works. Because one of the issues with um, the BusyBox version you'll find running on these DVRs is it's very heavily cut down. You've got almost nothing. You haven't even got grep on it. It's, it's very, very limited. And if you look at the code of Brickbot, what it tries to do is um, uh, FDisk one of the MTD blocks. Well, the BusyBox install doesn't have FDisk, FDisk in it. It doesn't work. The MTD blocks on most of these DVRs are read-only. The only device we've found that Brickbot actually works on is it accidentally overwrites MTD block 3 on one of the Flower and DVRs, all the ones we've looked at. So we don't understand what Unbrickabot was about. But what we do know is you can make Mirai, um, and you can re-enable it by using this interface on 9527 to make it open Telnet up, and boom, off you go. Um, we've also found a way to fix Mirai as well. So we can remotely fix a Mirai-infected DVR. The problem is, is the process to do that also allows Mirai to persist beyond the power of reboot. So we kind of thought it was probably a bad idea to publish that. <laughs> you know, hmm, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, probably not a good idea. So we were still struggling a bit. Um, you know, we found a way to re-enable Mirai. It didn't really give us too much extra. And then we found this. Um, we found Zhong Mai XM. This is the... Um, it's their make pack utility, it's kind of like an SDK, but it's, it's there for each brand, so whether it's Flareon, Lilin, Lorex, or whoever. It's for them to customize the, U, the UI of the DVR, so it actually does what they want it to do with their logo on it. Really cool. Once we'd found that, that gave us everything. And from that point, we had some fun. Have we got a browser up? Um, this is when we found something that quite worries us, actually. Now, that is the web interface to the DVR that's running on here. Um, that is port forwarded, so you can see it from the internet. The idea is that you can use your mobile app. Yeah, right, see what's going on at home, great. And we found some scary shit. This is nuts. So, helps if I can type. If you pass more than 152 characters <laughs> in a get request, it crashes. That's it, see it's not working anymore? Great, so it's dead. So this is on the internet and you can crash it. But it turned out, once we started monitoring memory, I did want to do this live, but we were really struggling with GDB today. Um, you see, I sent it capital A, ASCII, hex, capital A is OS41, and there's memory we scraped. So everything's overflowing. Um, we've now got code execution. That's quite nice. Um, Shodan, if you search for UC HTTPD, that's the Zhong Mai um, web browser. Uh, we saw just shy of a million of these out there right now. I think that's quite bad, actually. Um, it is a multi-threaded process. So it takes a few hits to get it to, uh, to pop every time. But yeah, it works. Great, hey? <laughs> anyway, and then to wrap up, there's loads of... No, that isn't all of it. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you want to leave. That's fine. Um, there's some other weird shit as well. We found this app in the app store from Jean Michael. Look at the mail. Uh, what the... <laughs> 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 I've got no idea what that going on there. Anyway, that's right, guys. That kind of includes the safe bit. <laughs> okay. So basic principles: monitoring, monitoring UART, JTAG, SPI, to try and get firmware off, analyze the firmware, and find um, bugs. So now we're going to do all that, and then yeah, <laughs> the fun bit. Is there any people in here easily offended? You need to leave now. All right. <laughs> Okay, um, so this is a little story. Frankly, this is why um, my Amazon recommendation. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's what happens. Oh, so you, you all know that about my friend Kayla. If you get Kayla on Amazon and a dildo, everything goes really fucking weird. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so what we're going to do is, <laughs> is use all those techniques that we just showed you on the DVR to get a root shell on a dildo. Great. <laughs> Now, a couple of words of advice. You know, we publish a lot of vanilla research. Our website gets quite a lot of hits. You know, it bimbles along, a few thousand hits a day, and gets a spike when we get, you know, I don't know, do stuff on a Samsung smart fridge or a telly or a car. We discovered that if you publish anything to do with sex toys, you get a fuck ton of traffic. <laughs> um, we actually, it, it, our own blog dosed our website. We knocked ourselves over the following this happening. So as a word of advice, if you ever plan on um, publishing sex toy research, get a CDM because you're going to need it, all right? The spike was nuts. And we broke this story with um, Motherboard Vice with Lorenzo. And I don't know if you, you probably remember, when you tweet uh, a URL, it'll inherit and try and show one of the pictures in the blog. Usually. <laughs> 
Lorenzo, when he wrote this up, um, had the first story, which was a picture of the dildo, and then the second one was of someone's cervix. A motherboard accidentally tweeted a picture of someone's cervix. <laughs> <laughs> so be really careful with Twitter when you're doing stuff with sex toys. <laughs> anyway, so I want to introduce you to the term teledildonics, which was, uh, uh, which was coined um, by a guy called Ted Nelson, which incidentally, was, he was the same guy who coined the term hypertext in 1963. So a cool guy, but clearly uh, a bit ahead of his time there. Um, the idea of teledildonics, as you, you probably know, you probably worked it out, is you have a, one of these, you have a one of these, and then you have a session with someone else with one of these and something else. Um, the bit that really freaked me out is I discovered, when I got into this whole field, was you can have group sessions as well. Oh, God. <laughs> this is really nasty. So anyway, let's start doing dildo, shall we? <laughs> right, so we're going to start with Lovins, which is uh, quite a big brand. Um, I've got one end of it here. <laughs> yeah, um, you, you won't go in there. <laughs> Uses a Bluetooth module, talks to your phone, um, and yeah, here's another bit that one of my colleagues has at the moment for research, I'm told. Um, <laughs> so we pulled apart the APK. Do you want to just uh, flick it up, Nick? Um, <laughs> um, yeah, where are we are. So had a quick look at the APK, threw it up in JDU, and had a quick look through to see what we could find. Hang on, you need to just move that onto the screen. Is it going to work? Yeah, there we go. And if you have a look at the, through the APK, you'll find some interesting stuff. We started playing around, we haven't gone too far with this, but the first thing we found was that when it, you can take stills of your session if you want. Um, <laughs> photographic stills, great. And the app will render them from bitmaps to JPEGs. In the process of rendering them, it writes a temporary image file to slash SD card, which seems like a really, really silly place to put images that are quite personal. Now, obviously, it's not. If you have a physical SD card, that's the SD card. Otherwise, it's available to other apps. It's kind of a bit of a bad idea, don't you think? I think that's a pretty <laughs> worrying thing to do. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. Um, the other thing we discovered, that the um, both of these devices have um, a default Bluetooth pin that you can't... Oh, no, hang on, let's go back one. Um, a default Bluetooth pin um, of four zeros. And for the first minute or so, if you're turning it on, it's in a pairing mode and will pair with any device. So you can use four zeros, drive past people's houses, do a bit of Bluetooth sniffing, and jump onto their sex toys and take control of them. Which is fun. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, which seemed like a bit of a silly thing to do, actually. Um, although we did have a bit of fun. So the Bluetooth serial interface, um, you don't obviously have to drive it through the app. You can also drive it through something like hyperterm or real term. We had a bit of fun. We had uh, dildo races in the office. If you want to get into the hardware, you need to actually take out the uh, sleeve. Yeah. <laughs> um, and one of my colleagues, Dave, um, you have, the way to do it is you put a couple of fingers in and then pull it out. <laughs> he didn't realise that one of my other colleagues was connected to it over serial at the time. He puts his fingers in, starts pulling, while my colleague inflated it. <laughs> he was stuck there for ten minutes. Like, you got a lot of fun with Anyway. Um, that was what we first did. We, uh, frankly, we got a bit bored, and I wasn't quite sure it was, it was the best thing for us to talk about. But I think it's probably quite important. I'll tell you about starting at PTP. Um, about two and a half years ago, one of, one of my colleagues started on his, on his first day. Well, kind of at PTP, everyone has like a kind of a pet research project. And I gave this new starter a choice. I said, you can either start with a Wi-Fi kettle, or you can have a go at a dildo. And he, he chose the kettle, and the rest is history. You've seen the stuff we own, kettles. However, we had another new start. It started on Monday. He came in, really nice guy. Nick's been working on toys on his desk for a week. <laughs> <laughs> new start comes in, looks around and goes, Oh, I've got a smart butt plug. Would you like to borrow it? <laughs> <laughs> At which point there is silence in the office. <laughs> and then we start pissing themselves. <laughs> so, yeah, for, he went quite red, but no, he genuinely had been researching the security of a smart butt plug. I knew something to do. Hopefully I've got it. Yeah, boy. There you go. <laughs> Meet a smart butt plug. I am promised it's unused. <laughs> anyway, so guys, uh, faith me, there's a couple of slides here we haven't released yet, so I'd appreciate if you didn't take photographs or tweet about a couple, and it's very obvious I've put at the top what to do. They aren't massive O days, I'd just rather they were, went through disclosure. Now, you can hijack the butt plug. <laughs> um, this uses blee, not um, conventional Bluetooth like the, uh, the dildo. Um, it's no pin at all. It uses the just pairing fun function of blee. 
and it's really, really verbose in terms of advertising itself. So it's very, very easy to take control of someone's butt plug whenever it's turned on. Um, there's other stuff we found um, in their FAQ. They make it very clear that there, there is no sensitive data either passes through their servers or is stored by them. And this is what um, uh, Alex found. He noticed that, yes, while video is relatively well secure, a hell of a lot of the other traffic is in the clear. I think that's really not acceptable, is it, guys? Um, disclosure was quite good fun. Um, they've not acknowledged it. That's great. Uh, the response was odd, though. There's actually two apps. There's Body Chat, which is the early version, which is a bit of a train wreck. It's got all sorts of problems with it. And there's Lions Wearables, which is the more recent one, which has the Cam Girl facility, which we'll come into in a minute. Uh, what I don't understand is that there's no need for the Body Chat app. It's old, it's buggered, it's insecure. 80% of their customer base are already on the new ones. They don't need to support this flaky old app. They've got a decent secure app, but they're not forcing people to use it. I don't understand that, frankly. It seems really odd. Anyway, I'm going to move on now. Things go really weird. Um, there's still some to-do work we've got to do. Um, that is the inside of your butt plug, if you want. Um, I'd really recommend, if you fancy doing a bit of IoT research, get onto the FCC website, fcc.id or fcc.io, and you can pull all the FCC RF um, certifications, which include internal photographs. And that is the PCB. And I don't think you can see that's some very, very interesting test ads. Excellent. But I've been told I can't take the butt plug apart, so I've got to buy another one. Damn. He wants it back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's fine with me. So we've got some to do's there. Anyway, things go a bit nuts now. This, this is why this week got really crazy for us. Because on Thursday, by complete and utter coincidence, a guy called Alberto Segura published a blog. Um, about some issues with the latest version of the app that we haven't had time to look at so far. Um, he doesn't have the toy. I've actually got one of these toys. It's coming on Monday. It's typical, isn't it? Um, it's published. It's, it's all out there. So this is obviously all public domain information already now. This is the Cam Girl version. He's found a load of stuff. Um, he's found XSS, so you can deliver messages um, by email, chat, whatever. Um, drop an XSS, and you can pop their dildo, which is great. Um, he's also found a load of other really interesting bugs. Um, in the cam girl version, he reckons you can carry out a DOS on the cam girl's dildo. And you can also take control of it. And the only um, item you need to know is their email address, which is great. And you think, OK, how am I going to find out the email address of a cam girl? Well, amazingly, their API has got a function for enumeration. Yes. <laughs> oh, wow! And you can also enumerate whether the user is a cam girl model or not. Brilliant. That is what I call a really useful API. <laughs> so go and have a look at his blog. It's really good. Um, he's, he's spent a lot of time on it. He doesn't have a toy. He's managed to do it all through, through the app. And you can also um, take control, as long as you know the email address, you can take control through the API of someone else's dildo, which is great. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Bit stupid. Um, you've probably all heard about Weavite. Um, I haven't actually got one of these. This is by two guys, um, two Kiwis, follower of Got Milk. They um, published at DEF CON last year. Spent some time talking to them, really interesting. But what I, I'm, I like about this is that we've seen some of the first IoT litigation, and I, I think this is the, 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 the state of things to come. Um, they collected far too much data, including location, behavior, usage patterns, which I get, you know, for product optimization, you're making it better, but they could identify users, locations, personal data, and what they were doing with the dildo at the time. OK. Um, they settled out of court about six weeks ago for 3.7 million Canadian dollars. Wow. You know, if we can't get regulation in place with IoT to force manufacturers to be good, let's, let's litigate. Great. Get in. Force them to be, do stuff. But what was weird is I then went to um, the, uh, the Play Store, and I looked at their very latest app. And they're still collecting location data, and they're still reading and writing um, useful information. Um, we connect. They're still doing. Um, crazy stuff, and they're still doing location. What are they doing? They've just been fined 3.7 million Canadian bucks, and they're still collecting long location data. That seems really silly. I don't know. What do you have to do to a company to make them start behaving securely? Now, this also is unreleased. Nick, should we do this one? Yeah. <laughs> Why not? OK, so this arrived on Monday. And yeah, this is quite an interesting little device. Nick, um, here you go. All yours. <laughs> Thank you. Um, should we turn her on? <laughs> right, I think we should do this over there. Good, right, so should we give it a go? Um, yeah, sure. We probably want to put that bit under the camera. Oh, yeah, let's put this under the camera, shall we? 
There you go. Actually, I think you should put that around the camera. It's much more fun. Nick, over to you. Your turn. Well, hopefully this will still work. Um, right. So, again, we got a nice picture of... Yeah, I think that's, a, that's in camera, isn't it? It's a bit weird. Um, so, again, we got the picture of this PCB off of um, the FCC website uh, and immediately saw there's four nice little pins down there at the bottom. You can see some wires coming off. Uh, and a little googling of and reading the data sheet of the processor JTAG. Just hanging about. <laughs> Why you need it there. Um, but we haven't managed to pull the firmware off it yet. She uses spy by wire. Yeah, um, we need a TI JTAG kit, which is on its way. Um, Should we show it working? If we can get it working. <laughs> Can't give it a go. Um, yeah, I don't know. If we, no, it's not going to work. we need power? I think we need some power for that, aren't we? Um, I can explain how it works. Go on, then. <laughs> <laughs> right, so the whole idea of this thing is this pairs with this, uh, and basically you twist and move this around, and the more you twist and move this, the more this vibrates. Yeah. So, I think your partner's supposed to walk around with this, and then you go, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's the concept of something that people are actually wearing out in the street, so to speak. So you could actually jack this over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just a bit weird. There just seems to be no thought to the to um, bleep pairing. It's just always in just works. There's no pairing pin. There's no pairing security. The only defence is the fact that um, it'll only allow one concurrent bleep connection. So if it's currently paired, then you can't connect to it. You can't jack it. Whereas if it's on and they haven't paired it, it's all yours. You can take control. Um, and again, really useful. We found this on the FCC website. It's in the test pass there. So you've got PCC, fantastic. We'll have the firmware off that early next week, I thought. Which should be fun. Right, Nick, this is where it gets a bit silly. Uh, <laughs> it's serious stuff, Ken. Yeah. Okay, so this next one's not for uh, fo uh, photos, please. This is the Kiru Onyx, which was only launched a few days ago. Um, it's basically a flashlight with a mobile app. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, do you want to show how it works, Nick? <laughs> um, yeah, we, we had some fun with this. You get it working. <laughs> Again, very, very similar issues to all the other devices we've seen. No one's really given any thoughts to how a secure pairing process. The blue pin is hard coded, it's not unique, it's 1234. Again, a little bit of Bluetooth um, surfing that you can find it. There's no option to change it, and again, it's always in pairing mode unless it's powered off, which is just stupid. Um, and the bug that we found, um, other than the fact it's got no pairing security, have you got it working? It just went me, me. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, the way that you share a session is you send someone a URL, a unique string. And the problem is you send that by email or chat, and it never expires. <laughs> and if you want to join Nick's session, that's the one you click on. <laughs> um, yeah, so it just, people just aren't thinking about this, these issues. You know, this is all five, ten minutes of research stuff, just playing with the app and finding really serious issues with the way that sections are set up there, and more. Is it working now? Yeah. It's the weirdest thing to watch. I guess that's the only way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Is it working? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah, that, that link lasts forever, so yeah. once you've got it, yeah, that's, that's I kind of it, wasn't yeah. doing that in the office for ages. Yeah. On the weird things, when you find yourself on the manufacturer's site, you start you find yourself doing weird things like reading the reviews and stuff. Because <laughs> <laughs> someone's complaining that it really wasn't very good at the vinegar spray. But hey, I mean. Anyway, so that's kind of loads of stuff we found along the way. And I think what we ought to do now is kind of do, do the, yeah, everything. This is, I'm sure you've probably seen already, this is a sign eye. Well, I think it's supposed to be said, see me. Um, but I think slime eye is probably more appropriate. <laughs> it is a vibrating dildo camera. And do you know when you're on the internet and you see one of those and go, I have to have... No, I can't. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think you can probably all see the use case. So, yeah, um, I, I, I... Anyway, yeah, that's how a, a picture of a cervix end up on uh, motherboard. But... Right. Okay, let's do this, Nick. You ready? <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So it's really odd. Yeah, it connects, you talk about wiggle first. Oh yeah, it yeah. connects. Use it as a Wi-Fi access point. So this 
is the access point. And that's really unusual. Usually it'll be, it'll be a client. Though. You'd start as an access point and then you switch it into client mode once you've configured it. Um, and because it's a wireless access point, you can wiggle for it, which is great. So you can actually find users based upon wiggle. So there you go, there's a couple of users. We only found two actually. And I think one of them is a sex show in Happy Harbor District of Tokyo. But you can wiggle for people's dildos, which I think was brilliant fun. <laughs> um, so just the concept is just so screwed up. And the other crazy thing you can do is once we've got the APK apart, we're just going to <laughs> they completely reused the code from a Sky Viper drone camera. <laughs> and if you go and look at it, and look at the code, you find some really scary things. Have you got, have you got the, uh, you got to change the code? I'll show the real one right Yeah, we've actually got it um, beacon path somewhere. Let's have a look. Yeah, so if you go into JD GUI, you're going to find, come on, uh, yeah, very satisfactory. <laughs> there you go. So if you start looking through it, you'll find all sorts of crazy stuff. So the bit that made me laugh the most is when you actually see the classes. They've got aircraft controls. You've got <laughs> drone controls. And they're like, you <laughs> but the bit that got us interested, other than the fact it's got a wing cam, is obviously this IP address, this port, admin, password blank. Ooh, we're going to have some fun with that. Should we connect to it? I think we should. Let's see if we can get it up over Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> should already be broadcasting. There you go. Let's see me. Let's get up. Let's get it on, shall we? Good. And let's get it up in a browser. Right. Wait for it to come out. Yeah, it's really slow and a bit crashy. So if, we'll see how we get on. Good, okay. No, no, no. Yeah. Come on. Maybe he's being shy. I think it's just been shy. So try it. So what's it one if you want to take one one? One one, yeah. yeah. That's all. There you go. There we go. Try admin. Cool. There, there we, we go. go. <laughs> image stream mode. Image stream mode. You called it my Kids Dildo. Still. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you can get some nice close ups of my fingers. <laughs> So there's a complete lack of security. You can't change the credentials on that interface. There is nothing you can do to it to make it secure, which is just nuts. You can wave on the camera. Like, Yay. It's quite close up, obviously. <laughs> Frankly, that was all a bit easy, though. We wanted to find something that was a lot more fun, see if we could um, do something a bit more amusing. Um, what we really wanted to do is see if we can uh, take that and use that uh, screenshot just in case. That's getting a root shell on it, because that would be much more fun, wouldn't it? Much, much more fun. And the reason, the way we found <laughs> The root shell was actually by looking through the code, looking through the additional functionality that been so built in as a result of it being a, uh, a drone cam. And we discovered all sorts of crazy settings. So you've got everything you'd expect from um, a webcam, including motion sensing. So you can actually set it up as a root shell with auto sensing, so it'll start streaming when someone starts using it. Get in. <laughs> Multiple concurrent users, brilliant, unlike Bluetooth. We like a bit of that. Right, should we have a go, Nick? Gonna try. Okay, so we'll show. Monitoring, um, show, show you the method we got to get the root shell on it. Let's give it a go. This is going to take a little bit of time. Right. Are we good? Cool, right. So let me put that on cam. What we've got over here is a very taken apart dildo. Do you want to get that up on the cam? Um, we had to sacrifice one for the greater good of security <coughs> research. You can just pop the re presenter up. Um, that is what happens when you take a dildo apart. Um, it all looks a bit scary. Um, getting the getting into it was quite amusing, actually. You've got to get the latex off, and actually the easiest way to get the latex off is to circumcise it around the camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then once you got there, you found a nice set of test pads, hooked them up to a serial console, thought, right, let's see what's going on. It actually took quite a bit of doing this. It was a, it was a good uh, week-long project to make it happen. Go for it, Nick. Go for it. I'll sit down. Uh, this has a weird speed as well. Now we need to. There we go. There's stuff. So, monitoring you up. Yep. <coughs> right. 
and then we just need. So this is why we showed the DVRs earlier, guys, because guess what? In order to get Telnet running, we used exactly the same technique that we used to unfix Mirai vulnerable DVRs. <coughs> Sounds a bit funny, doesn't it, mate? Should give it a go. So we can just copy that string. Um, yeah, they actually tell you these commands as well. They don't really keep it a secret. They have a, a wiki which has all their CGI parameters. <laughs> and yeah, that's where we got that from. And yes. yeah, then we have Telnet. Stuff probably, yeah, there it is. Good. Should go. <sighs> Ken's still there. <laughs> <laughs> You're connected to the wrong I one. You're connected to that one, aren't you? Should I turn this one off? Yeah. It's always a problem you have connecting to the wrong dildo. <laughs> <laughs> That should be on there. Yeah, it's flashing, so that'll be it. Is it going to work? Of course it will. There you go. Operation succeed. Boom. Now we yeah. can tell hey. them. Happy days. <laughs> um, well, yeah, we could show them mapping it, but yeah, it, it's up. Trust us. <laughs> <laughs> it's still there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's monitor you up see what we get. Rebooted. Right, and then we need to send the back to um, a bit quicker. <coughs> People are watching. <laughs> <laughs> Performance anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I think Sue will be alright. Is it playing ball? Yeah. There we go. So I'm just going to reboot to this up again. Okay. Really flaky. Don't think we're going to get to work, are we? <coughs> Try one more time. The exploit is really stable though. It's just the device is a bit yeah, a bit flaky. Might be because we took it apart. Oh yeah. <laughs> the, the drone one is just the same. It's just as good. <laughs> Sorry. Playing <laughs> <laughs> ball? No. Okay. I don't think we do. What we'll do is we'll just. Um... That's right. That's no, all. Should be. <coughs> one more time. Just thinking about it. No, we'll just do the, uh, just exploit it. Fine. Yeah, screw you. Yeah, right, let's turn this one off then so we connect the right one. Yeah? Uh, yes. Let's we'll... go. Right. Well, it just keeps rebooting. It's been... Don't know what it is. Anyway, okay, yeah. I shall talk through the exploit then. Get rid of that. Right, let's do that. So, always have backup, hey? Okay? So, it brings up Telnet. We were going to try the default Mirai credential set. We might get lucky, see how we get on, see if we get um, get roots in it. No. So we took the damn thing apart and then discovered that um, once we've got the firmware off, we had a bit of through, we didn't accept the password, thought we might get lucky there. No, no credentials, couldn't play it at all. What we were going to do was monitor um, UART. We did find an injection point. So if you actually went into the uh, web interface for the dildo, um, as a result of all the additional functionality it had, you could actually start calling mount errors. Once we've got the mount errors, we could then get the listing of the file system, but we now get managed to get out a separate password, which was great. Everything runs as root, like most IoT devices, <coughs> stupid. Um, thought, ah, can we brute force this hash once we've got it? No, didn't go, we had a really good go at it, couldn't get it to go. But then we realized, of course, we were root anyway, so we just wrote ourselves in as a new root, root, root user. Brilliant. And then once we've done that, we realized everything was a lot easier than we thought. Um, it's easier in hindsight, all we have to do is grab the firmware, Recount for debug. There you go. Perfect. So now we're all there. Right, should we do this exploit then? We've got it all scripted up. It's on GitHub. Let's connect to the right one. Let's disconnect this shell in here. Yeah, just do that. Yeah, all right. Fine, mate. Let's get this one going. It's going to take about a minute to get going. So it's on GitHub. That's going to take about a minute to boot up. And we've got everything 
scripted. This is going to be good, right? It's going to work, yeah? <laughs> Live demos on dildos. Don't do them. Let's give it a go. So, so in theory. You need to connect to it then. Yeah, and I might need to enable Telnet before doing that as well. We'll see. We'll see if it plays ball. Give it a minute. Come on. Flashing, Flashing should be up. script a little bit. Oh, I should cut it out, so we go. that we were sending, and by looking at them we found that we can essentially modify these strings and just uh, use them in order to write ourselves into the cat password, uh, etc. Pa et password, and as you can see there we then create ourselves as root hello on the telnet interface and it logs us in, if it works, which it's now. worked every time I've done this not in front of an audience. So of course it's going to work today. There we go. Pretend. <laughs> <laughs> of course it's going to work today. Uh, I can see what's probably doing it. <laughs> Is it working? I can see from here. It's still working. It takes a while usually. When it's time to come up, it takes time. Oh, come on, you're going to work. If it doesn't, I'll send the telnet command to all of Sometimes you need to. Still waiting. You got, it. You got the root shell? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, that bit doesn't work all the time. Put it over there. It'll come. Okay. It will come, but it will, yeah. And should get a video stream. It takes ages to load, though. Uh, come on. I don't know if it's actually going to play the video stream. For some reason, the video stream rarely works for me. Apparently, it always works for Ken, but this bit <laughs> always works for me and doesn't always work for Ken. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, there you go. I'm logged in already. <laughs> it says. And <I'm> die. <laughs> <laughs> I love demos. I love demos. Uh, that's all uh, that you work. Um, well, we'll do it again in a minute if you want afterwards. Good. There we go. So, we've kind of got the root shell. It, Let's go back to slide, shall we? Yeah, let me put this onto my screen and I can mess around with it. Yay! Yeah. Well, that's all shit. Yep. That's cool. All right. Just, um, bring that across. Yeah. Right, so anyway, it's on our GitHub, everyone. So, ah, damn. It's over there. It's on our GitHub. It's all there, ready for you to use. Um, ah! <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, yeah, there you go. good. Yay! It's all there. It's also a blog, so the entire process is there. It does work, I promise you. Um, we disclosed, sent them emails to their support mail address. Can you guess what happened? It's not a reply! <laughs> <laughs> Didn't hear a thing. Like most things with IoT, you get absolutely nothing back, which is really annoying. Um, oh, what am I doing with PowerPoint? There we go. 
Um, nothing happened, which is a real pain in the backside, but I do want you to just think about you know, why on earth would you make an IoT device that's got a camera in the end of it? It's just really, really stupid. Yeah, crazy, crazy stuff. Um, I do want to talk seriously for a little bit, because um, there are some broad principles there. I think what we learned in this process, of course, pornography is a huge thing. Sex toys are also a massive market. Yeah, there's a huge number of followers on Pornhub. And I think we laugh because we feel a little bit uncomfortable that this stuff goes on. And I think we're also a bit shocked that IoT and dildos were ever put together, which is annoying. And I think we also laugh because we're seeing bugs here from 10 years ago that take us 10 minutes to find, which is crazy. So we laugh a lot, but um, quite I saw recently was, please stop laughing. And that quote came from Brad Render, who runs the Internet of Dons. <laughs> <laughs> He's actually a really interesting guy. I've met him now. I um, uh, met him in Vegas last year. Because I think, you know, yes, we laugh a lot. It's, we're shocked it's so bad and so easy in so many cases. And also, disclosure is a train wreck. However, um, what Brad's been doing is actually setting up relationships with the various toy manufacturers and encouraging them to be a bit better. So if you've spent some time doing some dildo work, talk to Brad. <laughs> um, you probably recognize that dildo. That's one of the ones you did some work on. He is good at getting vendors to listen and getting them to change their behavior, which is great. But you know, the state of the nation right now is horrific. You know, SSL's not even rolled, let alone pinned. Um, the key storage is horrific, and there's usually terrible problems with the firmware. Um, but what I would say, guys, is you know, go have a play. You know, don't, be, don't be too shy about this. You know, <coughs> fun. You go screw up your own Amazon recommendations. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, if anyone does want to see that exploit working, we'll have it going again in the moment. But um, that's us. That's Nick. That's me with the blog. It is suitable for work, mostly. <laughs> Um, hope you found it useful. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Questions? Anybody? Is anyone brave enough? One right here. <laughs> Do you think that lack of security in sex devices is not a part by a feature? Like people actually buying them and expecting them to get hacked? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, is, is it is it by design? I don't think so. I think it's just a, a, a people just want um, people to connect and join the session and see the camera. Yeah, I, I think I think there's no thought gone into this process at all. And again, why would you reuse code for code from the drone? Yeah, it's just zero thought. Any more questions from brave people? Good. Thanks. Nice.